Good afternoon. I am Dr. Amy Gordon Bono. I am an internal medicine primary care doctor practicing in Middle Tennessee. I also hold a master's of public health. In Tennessee, we continue to hit record high daily coronavirus case counts and record low ICU bed capacity. During our most recent coronavirus surge, Tennessee hit daily new case counts of 3,317 persons with coronavirus on October 19th, higher than the highest spikes during our summer surge at the height. Tennessee's positivity rate is approaching 9%, clearly above the desired 5% benchmark set by the World Health Organization. We remain among the worst states in the nation, barely missing out on the top 10 today. We remain the worst state in the Southeast. Presently, we have 30.4 daily new coronavirus cases per 100,000 Tennesseans, averaged over seven days, clearly above that desired number of 10 and exceeding the critical number of 25. Our rural Tennessee counties remain among some of the worst in the nation. We are now seeing the consequences of the removal of social movement restrictions and the expiration of county mask mandates in late September. Essentially, Tennessee has taken a fall break from fighting this coronavirus pandemic, but this virus has used this fall break to again gain greater footing in our area. Much like in the July spike, Governor Lee was advised by the White House Coronavirus Task Force to issue a statewide mask mandate. And again, last week, that same recommendation came from our White House Coronavirus Task Force. Again, Governor Lee fails to listen to that advice. Governor Lee, we call on you to lead and issue a statewide mask mandate. Governor Lee, the choice that needs to be made is that you choose to fight this COVID pandemic with a statewide coordinated plan. Among the citizens left in the lurch are our children. To help us understand the impact of the coronavirus is having on our Tennessee children, I will turn the event over to Dr. Dana Saperi Harvey, a family medicine doctor from Franklin, Tennessee who also holds a master's of public health degree. And later we will hear from Elena Snyder, a high school student at Brighton High School in Tipton County. Dr. Safari Harvey, please walk us through the concerning information about COVID's impact on our Tennessee children. Thank you, Dr. Bono. I am Dr. Diana Safari Harvey, a primary care physician in Middle Tennessee, board certified in family medicine. I have been practicing medicine for over 10 years and I hold a master's in public health degree. As a physician who cares for children, their parents and elderly grandparents, as well as a mom of school aged children, I am very concerned about the rapid increase in the rate of COVID-19 in children, particularly in our state. As a parent, I worry about the safety of our children and our dedicated teachers and staff as we reopen schools amidst widespread circulation of the virus. As you can see on the slide, according to the Tennessee Department of Education report this week, we have had 442 confirmed COVID-19 in our students, up from 255 last week, and 266 staff up from 179 last week. In Middle Tennessee, the number has more than doubled in students and more than quadrupled in staff just over the past week. At Mayor Cooper's press conference last week, we learned that in Davidson County, since the beginning of September, case rates among school age children between ages of zero and 17 has increased by, by 
through contact tracing, they have identified clusters to be around extracurricular activities and social gatherings, such as sport teams, school parties, and sleepovers. There is a widespread belief that kids don't really get sick, and even if they do, they are asymptomatic and no long-term consequence. This is not true. We simply do not have enough data on this novel virus to know its long-term impact on the health of our children. But we do know about many other viruses that has been linked to long-term complications such as asthma, chronic fatigue, and cervical cancer. So we cannot gamble with what we don't know about the future impact of this virus. Furthermore, when a school age child is infected, it is very likely that someone in their family, a parent or a grandparent, will also get sick and potentially die as a result of contracting the virus from their school age child. One of the metrics that I personally pay close attention to is children and COVID-19 state data report, which you will see in the next few slides. This data is published weekly and is a joint report from the American Academy of Pediatrics and Children's Hospital Association. Unfortunately, since the beginning of August, Tennessee has ranked consistently in the top five in number of children with COVID-19. I repeat, out of 50 states, we have been in the top five. This is not an area that our state should be leading in. In this slide, you can see from the report um, that was uh, from the week ended in October 15, the last two weeks, we had a total of 84,519 new child cases with COVID-19, which is a 13% increase nationally over two weeks. Now in the next slide, we're gonna look at how different states rank in that order. When we are looking at number of cumulative cases, Tennessee is ranked fourth behind three states with much larger population, such as California, Florida, and Illinois. Can we advance the slide, please? Then when we look at the states ranked by number of um, percent, percentage of their cases that are children, we can see that Tennessee is ranked third um, in the number of percent of cumulative cases. And then finally, when we standardize the reporting and look at COVID-19 cases in children per 100,000 children, as you can see, Tennessee has ranked second worst in the country, and often in the past couple of months, it has been number one. Recently, Governor Lee stated that Tennessee also ranks among the top in the country on the number of schools that have reopened. Unfortunately, as you can see in these slides, what being top in the nation to reopen schools during a global pandemic has meant for our kids is that we are the second worst in the nation in number of kids with this virus. This is not anything to be proud of. Reopening schools while COVID-19 pandemic is still not under control is not a responsible plan. That is why we have experienced the roller coaster of opening and closing and opening and closing when COVID clusters are identified in school buildings. <laughs> Now we are even hearing of schools reopening without mask mandates. American Academy of Pediatrics highly recommends universal face covering to be used in schools for all adult staff and any children over two. As a physician, my colleagues and I know that our job is to follow science and be truthful. As a country, we have the talent, the skills and the resources to get this pandemic under control but we need leadership that prioritizes the protection of human life, specifically in our children. What we voted for and what we deserve 
is a leadership that is willing to listen to public health experts and implement policies that reflect science. This pandemic is a dynamic process. And if we don't continuously review and use the available data and control the spread of the virus in our community, the pandemic and the virus will outmatch us. Governor Lee, we took an oath as physicians and healthcare providers to protect our patients and we do that every day. We need you to protect us, our children, our teachers and staff by making masks a public health requirement in order to get this virus under control so that we can safely reopen our schools and keep them open and get our children back in classes safely. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Saperi Harvey. Uh, I would now like to um, ask Elena um, to please share your experience in your Tipton County High School. Thank you. My name is Elena Snyder. I am an 11th grade student at Brighton High School in Tipton County. I've lived in the small rural community my entire life. Currently, I am a distance learner. I had thought about attending in-person learning again at some point, but I quickly changed my mind after I heard about some dangerous practices the school was putting into place and some I have witnessed myself. This week, we returned from fall break and our mask policy was updated to say that masks were only required in situations where social distancing was not possible. Before this, periods of time labeled mask breaks were taking place where teachers and students would take a breather and take off or lower their masks. This completely defeats the purpose of masks and is incredibly dangerous to everyone. Health experts have stated that both social distancing and masks are some of the only interventions we have to slow the spread of COVID-19 and save lives. Health experts also have told us that COVID-19 is more infectious than the flu and can even cause asymptomatic carriers. These asymptomatic carriers would not know that they are carrying the deadly virus and could unknowingly spread it as they are unaware that they are doing so. The death rate so far is multiple that of the flu and we are continuing to see a rise in cases. Students, teachers, administrators, and all staff who do not wear their masks properly at all times can contract COVID-19 and unknowingly spread it to their family and to the general public, amplifying community spread. Who wants to be responsible for a family member, a parent or grandparent, a teacher, or a friend getting sick, hospitalized, or even worse, dying? Here in Tipton County, schools have been open since August 17th. Our fatality rate is currently 1.14%, and our five-day positive case rate is currently 7.1%, which is up 0.4%, per the Covington Guardian. Recently, our state governor, Bill Lee lifted restrictions on businesses and large gatherings in our state, except in six large counties that have their own health departments that decide their stance on the mask mandate and other restrictions. Even though numbers in rural counties like mine continue to rise. This has altered the school policy on masks implemented this week. As I mentioned before, this new policy states that masks are only required in instances where social distancing is not possible. At my school, Social distancing would only ever be possible during lunch as the classrooms simply are not big enough to properly social distance. However, this will probably lead to masks basically becoming obsolete because as I have noticed, most people don't seem to care. I have heard countless adults in my life say things like, it's just a hoax or it will go away after the November election. Even recently in stores, I have noticed that only a small minority still wear masks most of the time not including their own employees. This is incredibly worrying and will almost certainly cause the virus to spread even more. One of my teachers has mentioned to us on Google Classroom this week that she isn't at school because she is quarantining, meaning she was exposed to COVID-19. 
A few weeks prior, I had a few friends have to stay home in quarantine because they were exposed to another student in class who tested positive. It will not stop here. It's hard to expect anything different from our state citizens when we lack clear and concise leadership from our governor. Governor Lee rushed to open businesses back in May and is now rushing to get rid of restrictions on businesses and gathering sizes. Governor Lee doesn't even seem to have a safe and comprehensive plan to safely reopen schools and keep them open. He is passing the responsibility of solving the issues of COVID down to the local mayors and school boards to deal with instead of leading. This has re resulted in dangerous decisions being made that put all of our lives at risk. Governor Lee has not only refused to issue a statewide mask mandate, but has now completely thrown out most restrictions. Without these important safety protections, we are going to end up watching completely preventable sickness, hospitalizations, and death continue to massively grow. It will spiral out of control until the only option we have left is to shut the state down again or simply watch more and more people we know become hospitalized and even die. Governor Lee, please reconsider issuing a statewide mask mandate and begin to consider the countless lives, many of which are our children, you are putting at risk. I also want to ask my school board to please reconsider this new mask decision as you're putting all of the students' lives at risk. I am too young to have to watch my friends die and become sick. Thank you. Elena, um, thank you for sharing your experience. And, and, and frankly, I think your expertise in this situation. Um, so, you know, sadly, uh, Elena's experience is, is she's not alone she's not the exception um you know all over tennessee um, our schools are reopening and students are returning to in-person learning in counties where infection rates definitely exceed safe levels and you know to be clear we are seeing unacceptable coronavirus numbers grow in our state you know, reliable public health metrics that we should lean on uh, during this crisis are standardized population data of daily new cases and testing positivity rates. Ideally, to have coronavirus under acceptable control, we should strive for less than 10 daily new cases per 100,000 Tennesseans per day over a course of seven to 14 days. We need low incidence of that disease and we need stability of that low incidence. This is the metric provided by Harvard Global Health Initiative's risk level dashboard. Further, for the safest opening of our state, we need test positivity rates to be less than 5%. This is the metric advocated by the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control. Having a test positivity rate of less than 5% means that of all the tests performed in an area, less than 5% of those tests come back positive for coronavirus. Of course, this testing needs to be in the context of adequate uh, testing and rapidly resulting testing to allow for aggressive contact tracing. We need better control of coronavirus so we can have safer classrooms and safer workplaces. Governor Lee's refusal to take responsibility and listen to health experts has left local businesses and schools and parents and students students just like Elena, to fight this pandemic on their own. We need to advocate for a statewide mask mandate so that we can control the virus and help improve the lives and livelihoods of our Tennesseans. So, you know, let's, let's take a little bit of um, a look at some counties and their metrics and their case counts. Um, as they've implemented mask mandates and see how that has impacted uh, the spread of COVID-19 in their community. So, you know, in this first slide, Davidson County provides a, a good example. With restrictions on bars and social gatherings and mask mandates that, um, you know, those sacrifices that were made during the summer after that mask mandate was implemented on July 3rd, Davidson County, um, keeping its in-person classrooms closed, um, can proudly say that on September 6th, that their daily new cases were less than 10 per 100,000 persons. And again, just to uh, reiterate, whenever we're talking about these numbers of like 10 and 25 and, and those numbers, we're talking about the number of daily cases on average, the daily new cases on average, 100s. 
so here we have a, a graph that um, shows in July, uh, as the mass mandate was in, was implemented in Davidson County on July 3rd, that over time with sacrifice and mask wearing and mask mandate implementation that our cases in Davidson County went down. And so the challenge that we face um, in this graph uh, and in the challenge that Davidson County faces is that when um, October 3rd has arrived and phase three reopening has occurred, we have seen some cases start to drift up. Um, and, we're, and Davidson County is not quite to the level of that critical level above 25.0 cases at this point in time, but the challenge remains is can the mask mandate work or do further restrictions need to occur? Um, other counties in our area that uh, show, um, show different paths are the uh, Williamson and Wilson counties. Um, those two counties are alike. Um, if we could advance the slide, please. So to uh, Williamson County, uh, Williamson County also issued a mask mandate on July 8th as their case counts crossed that critical threshold of 25 per 100K and then started to drift down. And Wilson County has a similar effect. Uh, they had cases that were um, reaching critical level and a mask mandate was implemented and then cases drifted down and at this juncture, um, they allowed in Williamson County to um, let their mask mandate expire August 30th. Um, and at this point, the lack of masks has contributed to their cases rising in Williamson County to above critical level, above 25K. So if we can move on to the next slide. So again, Williamson and Wilson County show similar paths. They instituted a mask mandate and improvements were seen. And then after the expiration of that mandate, um, cases began to climb. Uh, Murray County is a different example. Uh, Murray County never had a mask mandate. Uh, the, city of, the city mayor of Columbia desired to issue one. Uh, however, the Murray County executive um, did not. In Governor Lee's order, the only county executive, only the county executive was given authority to issue a mask mandate. And again, Governor Lee's failure to provide strong leadership is demonstrated in this slide. The Murray County numbers do not show a nice suppression of coronavirus activity like the numbers in other counties with mask mandates. What is interesting is that uh, in Murray County, the, the county fair that was uh, opening on September 1 uh, does seem to demonstrate um, a uh, bump in cases However, uh, with proper contact tracing, one could make better conclusions. Again, a part of a statewide coordinated plan would have been having aggressive contact tracing. Um, and thankfully, Shelby County provides a better example. Um, so if we could advance the slide to Shelby County. So Shelby County, um, again, um, institutes a mask mandate in early July after cases are surging and currently uh, still has a mask mandate in place and currently has schools in the virtual setting. So um, Shelby County, in addition to um, Davidson County made sacrifices over the summer. Um, you know, in Davidson County, there was no CMA Fest. There was a um, lack of July 4th celebrations and Shelby County made similar sacrifices during the summer. So thankfully they have kept their case count in Shelby County below critical level at 19.0 at this moment in time. So thank you for the slides. So, you know, the, the data doesn't really lie. Um, and it's clear from these examples that uh, several and, and several others from around the country even, uh, that masks must be a part of a plan to control community spread of coronavirus. Mask mandates provide structural leadership as a part of any plan to control the virus. Although the magnitude of the effects can be difficult to measure, 
comparison between settings with and without mandates suggests that mask mandates together with other mitigation strategies contribute to the control of COVID-19. Enforceable mask mandates are one strategy that leaders can use to help reduce the spread of COVID-19 and protect the health of our Tennessee residents. Again, Governor Lee, you need to choose to fight COVID-19 with our Tennesseans. What is needed to address this aggressive spread, particularly in rural areas, is structural leadership from the governor. Structural leadership means issuing a statewide mask mandate and developing a statewide comprehensive plan to control the spread of COVID-19. Twice now, the White House Coronavirus Task Force has called to issue a statewide mask mandate in Tennessee. And in late July, 30,000 Tennessee healthcare workers and teachers joined together to do the same. You know, there's a saying, fool me once, shame on you. So no child, parent, teacher, or local community should have to fight this pandemic on their own. We are all in this together and mask requirements are proven to effectively mitigate the spread of COVID-19. If we want to keep schools open, the mask requirements are essential to help keep the spread of COVID-19 in the community under. Governor Lee's everyone fend for yourself approach in this health crisis is not working. Governor Lee, we need you to make the choice to fight this pandemic. Our teachers, parents and local employees and businesses and mayors shouldn't have to carry the burden of fighting this pandemic on their own. You know, we're all uh, suffering a little bit of loss right now in some form or fashion. Um, and you know, I really miss my regular relationship with football nowadays. Um, and one of my favorite motivational speeches uh, comes from the movie Any Given Sunday when Al Pacino's character takes his team into the locker room and talks about life being a game of inches. Um, this coronavirus pandemic is a game of inches. Every new COVID case is a loss to this pandemic. It takes every one of us making sacrifices and either we heal as a team or we're gonna crumble. We need to fight our way back into the light. In either situation, life or football or this coronavirus pandemic, the margin for error is, is so small. And we have to be dynamic in our approach. We have to be willing to change strategies when we are losing. Governor Lee, we are losing our coronavirus battle and we need you to change strategies now. Issue a statewide mask mandate. Wearing a mask is the best chance we have to take our team to victory. Please be the head coach we need you to be and provide the much needed leadership of directing a statewide, comprehensive, coordinated coronavirus mitigation plan. Thank you. And that will conclude the um, prepared comments. So um, thank you for joining us today. Um, I think we would now like to turn it over to any questions that might exist. If you have a question, just uh, raise your hand on Zoom or drop it in the chat box. Not seeing any questions, so we're good to wrap up. All right, thank you, Dr. Bono. Um, since there's no more questions, thank you for participating in this call. And we will send a recording of the call and a press release shortly to everyone. Have a great day, thank you.
Thank you.